Welcome to the Highly Evolved Podcast. I'm your host, Safan. You can find me on Twitter and get that AI. This is a real American Patriot channel for real American Patriot. If you're not a real American Patriot, please exit the channel. On that note, Transmission will commence momentarily. How you doing guys? This is the Holly Fall Podcast. Thanks for listening. Let me turn out the music. All right, if you're not aware, I've been gone for a week due to some throat issue. I can't, I got a, like a sore throat right now, so I can't speak for the, for the remaining, the following earlier week, prior week. But right now I'm feeling much better and what what more appropriate to debut, to re-debut than Memorial Day. If you're not aware, today is Memorial Day, is to remember the men and women who served the U.S. military, or not just the military, people who served, period. Firefighters, police departments, all right, real American patriots. And, and yeah, people need to celebrate this country, the people who serve in it, for your freedom. That's what I believe. That's what all Americans should believe. The people who don't celebrate Memorial Day, all right, people who doesn't celebrate Memorial Day are unpatriotic. Most likely, is the illegal immigrants. You never see a single illegal immigrant celebrate Memorial Day. All right, you don't see that. So, and they won't be in this country. And this is the type of gratitude they show us. All right, that's how I just want to say: if this country are able to allow you in this country, at least show some gratitude. But these people aren't willing to show any gratitude. All right. They could be in a war stricken country right now and they're still unappreciative of what country they're they're in. Alright, this is the only country where you could say anything without being persecuted because of our amendment, our ten amendment. Which people not too many people not, don't know that how many not American most Americans don't know how many amendments we have. We have twenty seven amendment, right? But the ten amendment is a bill of rights. Not too people not too many people know that. Alright, you go ask around people how many amendments we have, they're clueless. Right, because of the type of education we're bestowed on our country, all right, the type of knowledge that people have been feeding. That's why I don't advocate public school system because they don't they 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 they're there to control you, not there to inform you. The dumber the population, the easier to control. All right. So, but I digress. Today is to commemorate Memorial Day of the men and women who served the United States, just served the United States. Period. All right, and I respect you for that, and I um, thank you for your service. I just want to say that. But on that note, I just want to bring the story up, right? On Memorial Day, how appropriate to bring a story like this up on Memorial Day? Let me bring it up for you guys. It's on Breitbart. I'll leave a link in the description below if you are interested in reading it. All right? All right. Exclusive O'Donnell on Memorial Day. Two medal of honors, two medals of honors, two names, and two tombs are unknown soldiers. They're finally getting the medal of honor. All right, let's read this together. Every year Memorial Day at the cemetery of um, Balau, I guess Balau Wood, in France and the United States Marine Corps honored their fallen Marines who served who saved Paris during World War I from the German Army. On the other side of the Atlantic, at Arlington National Cemetery, the President of the United States lay a, a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier, paying homage to American fallen. The story of salty gun, gunnery sergeant linked to two iconic events. A Marine who received two Medal of Honors who had two names, including one falsified, Ernest A. Jensen. Fixed bayonet, 
a piercing shriek of marine whistles. Guttural bellow of fellow follow me. Taylor the, uh, Taylor the order as the men Jansen, 49th Company, emerged from the wood. Dawn turned gray. The light bafted and flow field in front of the men. Dewey poppy, red as blood, dotted with wasted deep wheat. The Marine advanced in Civil War style formation as their gaze to their rights and left and view panoramic largely introduced to the Great War. Sinus Hill of gain gl glumps of trees and a lust verdant forest that served as a haunting preserve prior to the war. A dense kidney shaped wood known as Boys de Bello, I think it's a French name, occupied roughly one square mile of land where June 1918, U.S. Marine Corps and Army 2nd Division would make an epic stance that halted one of the German Army final great offensive of the war on Paris. Two deep ravine cuts, ravine, ravine cuts through the trees, a massive boulder the size of a small building littered the ground, making Bala Woods a natural fortress, a ridge of 142 meter height, and therefore doubled hill, 142 sprawl to the west. To, to the west, Jensen Company had to take the hold and hill from the hundreds of battle heart in Germany, unbeknownst to the attacker. The Marine faced battalions from German's 460th regiments and battalion of the 273 regime, both under strength, including several machine guns company. Jensen's story is captured by national best-selling book released this week in the paperback, The Unknown, Untold Story of American Unknown Soldier and World War II Most Decorated Heroes Who Brought Him Home. As an angry red sun emerged just above the horizon of the cloudless blue skies be behind the men, backed it many turns their heads, some for the last time, to glimpse the glazing sun. At the instance, German shell and machine gun bullets ripped it through the golden farmland, striking flesh and bone. As men began toppled like dominoes, marine officers screamed, battle sight, fire at will. Their voices broke through the dens and battle and the uh, agonish cried, egg, <coughs> not agonish, anguish cried and wounded dying men. Although unvastly outnumbered by Germans, Jensen Company and Mother Marine Company miraculously seized Hill on 42, but platoon with an original strength around 60 men held withered to the pitfall handful of men led by the corporal. Most of his officers were dead. Reinforcement has had not arrived, moving from position to another. Jensen ordered his men to dig and sit and set up strong point and outposts. The Marines scored the hills for working Germans, machine guns and belts and ammo. Making the most of the mangled forces, the Marines sent out a few men to, as scouts to keep an eye on the fl flank. Then the heavy thud of thunder of German artillery shook the hill. Jensen knew the shell signal one thing. German counteract at Hill 142 and began. The def defying, def defending blast of grenade the deafening blast of grenade def <laughs> the deafening blast of grenade dashed their Feverous effort to bolster the anemic defense <laughs> defense at Hill 142. Sorry about that. Some technical difficulty with the mic. A blood-curling scream emanated from the direction of Gunnery, Seg Seg Gunnery Sergeant Ernest Jensen, fighting position, 
a moment earlier, one of the corner of his eyes, and fourth year old, forty year old Jensen had caught sight of more than a dozen stalem of helmet waving through the underbrush of the front of the foxhole. Jensen leaped it into the infiltrate infiltrating columns of the German the German who had positioned five machine guns to annihilate forty nine company. He impaled he impelled the belly of the first soldiers and twist the bayonets, knee blade, e eviscerating him. With drying his bayonet, bayonet, the gunnery lunged again, penetrating the torso. Next field, gray, clay, cl <laughs> next, then the next field, gray, clayed soldier. I'm sorry about that. My eyes, I need my glasses. Jensen commanded effort company George W. Hill Hamilton describing the feverish fight, shooting the beat and devil. Not more than 20 fleet from, from us was a line of about 15 German helmets and five light machine guns just coming in action. All alone, Jensen sprang it at the Germans. His war cry alerted the rest of his company who added their effort to Jensen's hero heroic and baleful bayonet, killing or scattering a column, forcing them to flee, abandon their, abandon their weapons. Several wounded Marine veterans with the darling charges saved, saved the 49 and the hill. At, had the Germans been able to set up the gun, they would have obliterated of the 49th and taking the hill, retaking the hill. With his bravery and disregarding his own safety, bloody bearing gunnery segment Ernest Jensen would became the first recipient of the Medal of Honor for the American Ex Exped Expeditionary Forces, receiving both Navy Medal of Honor and Army Medal of Honor. Since Jensen served as a Marine in the Army in the 2nd Division unit at the 4th Brigade, consisting two Marines regiment, both the Army and Navy could recommend him a, pra a practice the service did always did away with shortly after World War I. The two medals were awarded to Charles Hoffman Jensen, allies he uses to enlist in the U.S. Marine Corps. Sorry. Both August 17, 1879, the New York City Jensen was nearly his four, 14, I guess, 40th, not 14, 40th birthday in the summer of 1980, 1918, 1918. This made him an old man in the eyes of the man he led. He had Originally enlisted in the U.S. Army under the real name Ernest Jensen and served for 10 years before going absence without leaving. A criminal offense. A criminal offense. He later had a charge of heart, change of heart and re-enlisted as a Marine Corps to avoid de detection. He altered his name to Charles Hoffman before joining the Marine. His, his ruse worked and Jensen was a model Marine. He served record states and he was an expert at riflemen and, and spear sh sharpshooters. He had led up, he had received a promotion of sergeant in 1914 and served aboard the U.S. Navy ship during the lead up to American involvement in the Great War. In the first week of May 1917, Jensen, of many of his fellow Marines, who had several of his members of the Marine Guards, in the boards of USS New Hampshire formed the 49th Company, 250 men strong, in Norfolk, Virginia. In 1921, General John J. Sorry, John J. Pershing. Pershing, I guess I think that's pronounced him. Sorry, I apologize. The former commander of the American Expedition Expeditionary Forces in France like Jensen and seven other men to bring him home, the remaining of the unknown soldiers. Perishing bodies, barriers, as they would be known, were some of the most darn 
daring, heavily decorated, enlisted men to fight in World War I. Their history uniquely spanning American service, branching and specialty uncovering an untold story within a forgotten story of Army, Navy, Marine, Infantry, Cavalry, Full Artillery, Coast Artillery, Heavy Artillery, and Combat Engineer. Their rank include cowboys who relive the, char the charge of the light barrage and the American Indians who heroically led the way by breaching mountains and barred barbed wire and capturing scores of German prisoners, assaulting New Germ assaulting New New Englanders who dueled a U-boat for hours in the fierce gunfight, and a tough Bostonian who sacrificed his body to save his ship, artillerists who bombed it and shelled it their way to victory, and the indomitable hero blinded by gas who still managed to destroy five machine guns nested, no, nested and killed one German soldier with a mighty swing from his pickaxe. The unknown tells the extraordinary stories. It would have the large narrative of Americans' involvement in the Great War through the previous untold story of his body bearing, cumulating, <laughs> bearing, commemorating the stories. Commemorate. You, you guys can read that. In the stories of unknown soldiers who we, who we honored very. Memorial, every Memorial Day belonging to the American fallen from all of our conflicts. Patrick K. O'Donnell is a best-selling crit critically acclaimed military historian and an expert at the elite unit. He is author of 12 books including The Unknown, un the, Untruth, the Untold Story of American Unknown Soldiers, World War I, Most Decorated Heroes He Brought Him Home, which currently available in the new release of Barnes & Noble's Washington Immortals which has been named at the 100 Best American Revolution Books in Journal Revolution. O'Donnell served as a combat historian in the Marines and platoon during war into the Battle of Fallujah and speak often on espionage, special operation, counters, insurgency. He has provided historical consulting, DreamWorks, award-winning Mesmerizing Band of Brothers, Ministry Bands of Brothers for their documentary produced in the BBC and History Channel and Discovery. Patrick O'Donnell. The, you'll find him right there. All right. This is an excellent story of how heroic these people are. Let me switch back to my face. All right. All right. What I just read, I know it might be a long read but what I've just read there described the type of men who's willing to put their body on the line for our rights our freedom all right no matter how old old, old are they no matter how what time decade it is it's the fact that they risk their lives so we can live to be free till this day this is why it's so important to remember the people who put their life in, in line and sacrifice for what we could enjoy right now. This is why I'm so respectful of these people, respectful of the truths, respectful of people who serve in the military force and and um, this country. All right, you can have your own opinion what they're serving for, right? People, because I come across people and content that say the real, re the real, oh, sorry, but the mic, technical difficulty. The real reason... Um, why people join the Armed Forces? The real reason why we celebrate Memorial Day. But besides the fact, besides their own interpretation, this is why I want to celebrate Memorial Day to commemorate these people who's put their life on the line. Yeah, people have their ideas of the, the the true nature of war, the true nature of the United States. That the United States is a is owned by the bankers because we went bankrupt and then we sign our our life to those bankers so with so the truth is actually fighting for the bankers to get rich all right fighting for fighting for bankers interests for resources yeah i'm not denying that 
right? I'm not denying that, but we also have to remember the fact that these people people put in the life online for us to breathe as well, for us to be in this situation, for us to say what we're saying right now, all right? I respect the truth because they put it in life online for for me, all right, for me being able to say what the true intention of these government people are, all right? We could say these stuff because of their dedication and their sacrifices, all right? We could say the government is an evil entity, we could say the United States is an evil entity because of the of how we are entrenched to the banking system, how we entrenched to the Federal Reserve, how all these war are initiated for the bankers' interests, right? We could say that, right? We could say that due to these people who sacrifice their life for us to say that, all right? I'm not defending the bankers. There's a own there's a own narrative, there's a own story I could do another day of, but I just want since today is Memorial Day, I want to remember the people who sacrificed for us to say this stuff, all right? Thank you for your service. All right, the people who's not appreciate this are un-American. Most likely, they're illegal immigrants because you don't you don't see illegal immigrants waving American flags after we allowed them to come in. You don't see refugees waving American flags after we allowed them to come in. All right, we don't see asylum seekers praising the United States after we allowed them to sink them. This is why I think if you're if America allows you to come in as whether you're a, a refugee, asylum seekers, right? The mandatory is you have to wave the American flag. You cannot wave your country of origin flag. There's a reason why you escape your country of origins because it's not it's not the right living conditions. All right, that's why I'm so infuriated by all these illegals and refugees. You escape your original country for a reason because it's not an ideal place to live. And you come to a country like America and you're not and you're not showing any gratitude of what we've been doing for you guys. All right, this is why I don't understand. All right. Asian, Hispanic, whatever you are, all right, people who come from foreign countries come to America. You should not wave your 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 foreign your your country of origin flags, whether you are Asian, Chinese, Mexican, or whatever Italian. You're in American soil now. What kind of gratitude is that? All right, if the, if the country is so great and you like to wave your flag, why don't you go back? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I just don't. All right? I see all illegals, Honduras, Salvadoran waving their flag. I was like, if your country, so, why, if you love your country so much, why don't you just stay in your country? Why are you, why are you here in America? All right? It's like going, it's like going to people's houses and they open their fridge for you to eat and you don't thank them. It don't make any sense. It's like, it's like um, it's like going to people's houses, ask them to sleep on their couches, and put and and stop mud on their couches after you leave. That makes any sense? Why are you waving your Why are you waving your country of origin flag? I don't understand that. You should be waving the American flag and support a troop. All right, if you want American to take you seriously, you have to assimilate. All right, it don't make any sense. This low IQ. Illegals, people of foreign origins. Like, if you want to come to this country, show that you're dedicated to the country. Show some kind of simulation. So, some kind of um indication that you're willing to stay here. Like, learn English. Wear the American flag. Celebrate the Fourth of July. Put the American flag in front of your house. All right, be proud American patriot. If not, then people already see what type of person you are. These illegals immigrants, they're not patriotic. They want a free handout. They feel like they're entitled to it. For what? You're not even in this country. You're not even paying taxes. All right, but I know this video has gone too long, but I digress. I'm going to digress right here, and I just want to pay respect to what today is and the symbolism of today is the American Patriots of Memorial Day. Pay our homage to the American Patriots who sacrificed and put their life on the line for what we can do right now, all right? On that note, because you because of what I'm saying, YouTube are not monetizing my channel. That means I'm not bound by any outside interference. That means I'm un un unscripted, unrehearsed, unedited. That means nobody can't control me what I'm saying. Because of that, I'm not taking any donations because I'm trying to spread out my message. If you like what I do, please like, share, and subscribe. Most important is subscribe because it shows me that people are actually watching. When it, when I see that people are actually watching, it encourages me to make more videos. And on that note, guys, I know your time is very valuable. I'm not trying to waste any of your time. And I thank you for listening to me. 
And God bless America. And I hope you guys celebrate Memorial Day and respect your your veterans. They need a lot of respect for for your because you wouldn't be here. It wasn't for them, all right? On that note, guys, thanks for listening to Hollywood Podcast. My name's Stefan. Happy Memorial Day, and I'm signing out. Peace. <laughs>